Hello, my name's Mike M Zero MSN, and uh, normally I do um, uh, videos about radiometer uh, projects and things that I do with the radiometer um, community. However, uh, this particular uh, video is all about uh, air source heat pumps, and that's because I'm having one installed into my property. Actually, two, uh, one at each end of the house. Um, they're being divided into two because I've got uh, eight rooms to um, to heat. Now, normally, um, you would have a water system put in, so you would have an air source heat pump that that heats water. I'm having an air to air system put in, um, so I thought I'd make a video about it because it's a little bit different than the run of the mill. Anyway, let's uh, see how we get on. Right then, <laughs> world meet Mike. Now, I feel a bit intimidated. That's fine. Because you've been doing YouTube for a long time. Uh, three years. Yeah, yeah. and you've got like 15,000 odd subscribers. That, that would be nice, that's about 14,000 Four, 14, subscribers. Yeah. Yeah. So tell everybody what it is you do. Okay, well, my um, YouTube handle is Mike uh, M0 MSN, because okay. I'm a radio amateur and do a lot of antenna construction and um, amateur related YouTube videos. So, um, so you yeah. build a lot of like DIY custom made antennas and try different projects. Yes. Mostly on your kitchen table. Yes, that's uh, one of the trademarks. Yeah. <laughs> Break it if you do it in yeah. the kitchen. Yep. And I helped you with one of those once. We soldered up some copper tube and made That's it. right. You made uh, a big magnetic big. loop with me. Uh, right. well, in fact, you made it. I just watched yeah. and it was. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's one of the, actually, funnily enough, one of the highest um, watched videos that I've got. Is that right? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good yeah. job my face wasn't in it then, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It did help. Okay. So you're no strangers to doing this, obviously. No. And most of your videos, what you film right here at home. Yeah, uh, and in fact, everything's done either in the kitchen or here in the garden, um, or the uh, for those watching in the states, that's the backyard. Um, so yeah, a lot of it's done here. Um, in fact, most of it is done. I think I've only done two or three videos away from uh, from the home QTH uh, yeah, yeah. or home yeah. location. And it amazes me that there's so many people in the world that's still you know really into amateur radio. You know, you think as time moves on and the internet and everything else, you know, that older technologies are left mm. behind. But I mean, there's still a, a huge following for yeah, amateur it's, radio. It's, it's actually quite strange because a lot of the uh, the trailblazing um, tech that's uh, that's out general purpose it was actually invented or should we say trialed within the amateur radio world first right. before it became a commercial product yeah um yeah. yeah so there's still a lot to learn still a lot to do uh, one of the things about being a radio amateur is that if the third party that is the cell towers or electricity goes down we're still able to communicate with each other yeah yeah so in the event of the zombie apocalypse and this so everybody yeah, ran to your house yeah, yeah i'll get me tutu out and um, get me radio and we'll yeah <laughs> yeah anyway, well going back to blazing technology so we're here today we are taking out your gas condensing boiler your natural gas condensing boiler and your invented hot water cylinder and we're converting you completely over to daikin air to air heat pumps yeah. And a hot water solution, which I've already alluded to, which we'll cover once we get onto that bit later on. Yes. But um, aside from us being mates for 25 years, <laughs> uh, and you is having it, contact. Is, is it only 25 years? <laughs> it, yeah, it is. Yeah, it's 25 years, yeah. Um, <laughs> what was it that sort of made you want to choose uh, to go for this right now? Well, th there's two driving forces behind it, okay? Yeah. The first one was we wanted to be um, more carbon neutral, do yeah. our bit for the planet, if you like. And I yeah. know that sounds very, but it, it is, it no, is, I, th I think it is a, you know, one of those things that we all have to strive towards now, uh, regardless. Um, you know, we are, uh, on the edge of that, that apocalypse. It might not be a zombie one, but we're on the edge of, yeah. a, a, you know, a, yeah. a problem with far the, more frightening the two, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, if we can do our bit, we'll do our bit. Um, and secondly, uh, I'll be honest with you, it's uh, running costs as yeah. well. Yeah. Okay, we are uh, in the UK at the moment um, suffering from um, a rather high inflation and energy cost yeah, we uh, are. spike. Yeah. Um, and although this is costing um, a reasonable amount of money to install, yeah. the, uh, the fact is that we are now intending to stay in this property perhaps for the next 20 years or so. Yeah. Um, yeah. And going forward, we want to see our energy costs 
um, plateau, if you like, or, or stabilize. Yeah. Now, as gas keeps going up in, in price at the moment, and I can't see that changing in the very near future, no. um, the, the answer for us was to go all electric. And as we're partially solar as well, we can control the price of that, of, yeah. of, of that heating, perhaps. Uh, yeah, I mean, that is, touching on the solar, that is a nice thing that you can grow your own electricity and help offset your usage yeah. uh, with, with your air-to-airs here. So in the UK at the moment, we're on capped gas and electric rates. We're paying, I think, about 34 pence per 30, kilowatt. 34, 35, yeah, something like that. Per yeah. kilowatt hour for gas and around yeah. 10, uh, sorry, no, I beg your pardon, 34 pence for electricity and about 10 pence for uh, gas. Uh, per kilowatt, yeah. Per kilowatt. So we would want our seasonal coefficient of performance of these units to be in excess of 3 to 3.4, yep. if that makes sense. Yep. So that would put them on a, a cost balance. The Daikin units that were fit in here, they've got a seasonal coefficient of performance in excess of 5. Brilliant. So you know, they're 500% efficient, if yep. you like. So they're already going to you know, beat... No. You, I know that, sorry for interrupting you, but I know that there are two um, stated coefficients. Mm. There's just the COP, which is the uh, yeah. uh, coefficient factor. Yeah, and which then is taken out of a fixed set of parameters. And then yeah. there's an S uh, COP. COP. So yeah. what's the difference between those? Maybe okay, so COP is the coefficient of performance at a given temperature and a given humidity, humidity. So in one fixed operating mode, in one set of fixed operating conditions. And then the seasonal coefficient of performance is taken over an entire heating season. So the SCOP is the more representative example of typical yeah, usage. Yeah, okay, so that's yeah. kind of an average over the year. Yeah, it is, yeah. yeah. So, so with air-to-air -air heat pumps such as this, they have two stated seasonal efficiencies. And one which uh, our American cousins might be more familiar with is the one we use for cooling and they use for cooling is called SEER, which is S-E-E-R, which is seasonal energy efficiency ratio. And we use that to express the efficiency performance of this unit in cooling. Right. So your unit has two stated efficiencies or your units have two stated efficiencies. They have the SCOP, which is for heating mode, and the SEER, the SEER for cooling mode. Uh, and both of these, the SEER is actually higher. They're actually more efficient in cooling operation than they are in, in heating operation. And that leads us on to the other thing is, um, the simple fact is, you know, we've just had a really wicked summer, haven't we? No, we've absolutely. Had an incredibly it was lovely, hot yeah. summer. And uh, the benefit of these units, of course, is that not only are they going to provide you with really energy efficient heating, they're going to provide you with you know, amazing cooling through the, the summer months as well. Yeah. Now, these are air sourced heat pumps. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and the version that we've gone for is air to air. Yes over air to water exactly right yeah okay now the air to water i understand does the hot water but yeah. is actually um, perhaps less efficient for heating the house than the air to air but i could be wrong with that um, i think it's it's a horse for course if you like yeah it is so the reason air to air is so efficient uh two sort of main driving factors really one is that air to air operates at lower differential temperatures. So the fan coils don't need to get particularly hot. They, the refrigerant only needs to get to sort of 29, 30, maybe up to 35 degrees to perform great in the house and keep the fan coils warm. Um, whereas an air to water system, air to water with underfloor heating, that's only running at say 40 or 45 degrees is pretty efficient. But if you've got to make a, an air source heat pump, heat water to 55 degrees or above for radiators, that's when the efficiency starts to drop yeah. off. So the whole, whole thing with energy efficiency with heat pumps is all about differential temperature. It's about the temperature of the air outside and the temperature you're trying to achieve. So the bigger that differential is, the more the efficiency drops off. That's why air to air is so efficient. And the other thing as well is, which I think is often overlooked, is that an air to air system such as this is a closed loop system. So the indoor and outdoor units are connected to each other all by refrigerant pipework and their own interconnecting electric cables. And there are thermistors uh, on each of the units. So yep. all the fan coils have three or four thermistors. They're constantly looking at the humidity in the room, the temperature in the room, the temperature of the refrigerant, and they're corresponding with that data with the outdoor unit. So it's a completely closed loop system. It knows what its target temperature is. It knows what its room temperature is. It knows the humidity inside. It knows exactly what it's doing. So it's a closed loop system. So in respect then, you're not actually wasting energy as well because with a hot water um, 
radiator system. It's taking a lot more heat to bring those radiators up to the temperature you need in the room. Yeah, exactly. And right. then when it reached temperature, you still got wasted hot water, if you like, uh, in in the system. Yeah. Uh, am, am I am, am I right in thinking that? Yeah, yeah. Where this has got more control of keeping the room exactly, at temperature. Exactly right. So yeah. so is what you'll notice is when you first turn the units on is that the response time is incredible. Yeah. They'll, they'll be producing hot air from the fan coils within one to two minutes. And the same in cooling mode, they really are really quick to respond. Yeah. And um, you'll notice that the refrigerant temperature, um, we talk about refrigerant, but heating, you know, I know it sounds yeah, it's, it's backwards, it's, 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 but the, ref yeah. the refrigerant <laughs> is obviously at higher temperature when it's in heating mode. That refrigerant will initially come up to quite a higher temperature, but as the room warms up and that return air temperature comes up, the refrigerant temperature will modulate down and the fan speed of the indoor unit will modulate down with it. And that's another beautiful thing about these units is everything is capable of modulating. Yep. We see on these boxes and we see on um, all, all this sort of heat pump equipment, nowadays it's all inverter, it's all, you know, inverter this, inverter that. It just means that the compressor inside this, the scroll compressor, and the fan unit and the indoor fan unit in the coil, they're all capable of ramping up and down to meet their load requirement. And that's another part of that closed loop system is the fact that the thermistors and the demand on the system, they all help to keep the energy use as absolutely as low as possible. Okay, well, thanks very much. Um, right, I'll let you get on because I, right. I can tell that everyone's so uh, it's needing a you to do some work. It's a, it's a five day job, this is day one. Yep. Um, I'm hoping we'll get it done in 10 days. That's fine, mate. <laughs> <laughs> okay. well, if, you do it, if you do it any slower, I mean quicker, uh, yeah, anyway. <laughs> okay, well look, thanks very much, Mike. No let's, problem. Um, let's get on and do some work. And if you don't mind, I should be filming during the week. Uh, yes. so that my guys can see how things are going in. Filming and, me, uh, filming you. Filming you. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we'll see how it all goes. All right, thanks. Excellent. Thanks, mate. Cheers. Bye-bye. We just had a lovely cup of coffee. Mike has the best coffee. If you get invited around Mike's house, go for the coffee. Chat, not so good, but coffee, <laughs> excellent. So um, we picked a bad day for doing this. Your neighbour seems to be doing some DIY. Yeah, I think they're replacing the fence and uh, obviously the guy's drilling, so. There's a really annoying man drilling holes. <laughs> if this will help. Yeah. Yeah, not a lot Please we can do. Bear with us. Anyway, right, okay. So we are going to have a look at doing the bracket. Yep. For the, uh, for the system. Uh, also mount the system and also look at some pipe work that's used for the system. So yeah, it's, it's all double dutch to me, but I'm sure it's going to make perfect sense Easy. once he's explained it all. Yeah. Cheers. So that's it for this particular video. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to record the installation over the next five days uh, and then I'll break it up into, into sections, the outside work and the inside work. Um, and then we'll do a, um, a comparison between the old system and the new system uh, and perhaps even look at the benefits of the air to air over air water or perhaps water over air. Um, anyway, there we are. Thanks very much for watching this one. Uh, next one will be coming in the next couple of days. Cheers. Right, so top of it. I think you just lift it up. You push it out like so. It's a, a two-man kite. <laughs> oh, this is all good fun, isn't it? Like that. Pull it. That's it. Push it out. That's it. And then put those down. And then push that one up. You're taller than me. Like so. Oh Jesus! This is this is. Brian, you must have the easy side. That's ace. That's ace. Well, it said 30 seconds, but it's the first time, isn't it? Hey, it's well made. That's unusual, isn't it? You don't normally last as long on your first time. <laughs> Apparently not. <laughs> We've got all these little guy things, whatever they're called. Oh, I'll just take this off. I'll put it down. Single man, the very